Amari Alvarez. And I'm Landry Ledbetter. And this is UTA Spotlight. Today, UTA and the library celebrates El Dia del Nino. Our very own sits down with baseball's Darian McElmore, and we catch up with the baseball and softball squads. Grab your bag and follow us around campus. April 30th is El Dia del Nino, where UTA and the Arlington Public Library team up for an event. They promoted literature from different cultures within the community, filling the library with smiles and laughter. April 30th is marked as El Dia del Nino, or also known as Kids Day, where UTA and the Arlington Public Library hosted an event where they promoted literature from different cultures to the Arlington community. El Dia del Nino event was filled with handcrafts, soccer, face painting, music, and reading. It's great. Are you having a good time? Muy lindo, muy lindo. Me ha gustado bastante. Well, I'm with Dr. Rueda Acedo, who's actually the organizer of this entire event. How are you doing today, Doctora? I'm doing great. I am so excited to be here. I am so excited about the good turnout that we had, and I'm so excited to have all the students that we had from UTA that volunteered today. Not only did the event consist of fun and laughter, but it also promoted the importance of literature for children. Why is it that we decided to focus on different languages rather than just focusing on Spanish? Because El Dia del Niño, I mean, you celebrate it in Mexico, but sometimes you really don't hear about it here in the U.S. I think it makes sense that it would be a multilingual uh, event that has a strong Hispanic aspect to it, but it's not limited to that. And I think that's what makes uh, North Texas great. It's our diversity, and that's the source of our strength. And we need to be proud of that. We need to promote that not only among college students and adults, but also the upcoming generations. Children's book writer Roseanne Tong was a special guest at the event, and she took the opportunity to give every child a signed copy of her book. I had a group of four or five students upstairs. I was giving a workshop, and they're no more than 12 to 14 years old, and I can tell they're already going to be authors. So it's really delightful to have a chance to work with them and encourage them and uh, mentor them in any way that I can. Viridiana Martinez, UTA News. With ongoing success, the second annual event will continue for years to come. For one student, the love of the game means more to him than you would think. Rochelle Speaker caught up with our student athlete. Baseball is my passion. It's, uh, it's what I've loved since I was a little kid and it's what I'll love for my whole life. Pretty much right out the room. I had a bat and a ball and a glove before I could even walk. Like, uh, I think it was plastic covered with leather, this little bat. And he took that and his ball that came with it everywhere. And everywhere. everywhere. It was always baseball. I mean, baseball is kind of a family business. My dad played. Honestly, it's been a real big bonding thing between myself, my father, and my brother. Um, it's just a bunch of memories of going to the, to the ballpark early with him. Oh, my God, that was fun. I mean, that's, you know, one of the things you live for as a father and you make it to the big leagues. This is, that's one of the things that you always dreamt of was to be in the big leagues. And now you've got your sons. That's just a blast. I think that's a, every father's dream. Darian's parents told me that he has been committed to the game his entire life, and his work ethic has never diminished. Darian describes his drive as respecting the process. This is a philosophy the whole family can get behind. I would work with him when he was gone. Got drilled a couple times by him, wasn't pleasant, but <laughs> didn't get behind the screen quick enough. <laughs> Whenever I hit the dirt, um, it's game time. It's time for business. Kind of a coach on the field, you hear that a lot, but he really is. We have some positions in the infield, they're, they're new to their position this year, and he's the only returner. So uh, we've been really relying on him to be a leader. Be Darian McLemore coming up here for UT Arlington. McLemore, the senior second baseman, 309 the average on the year, 346 slug, 404 on base. Oh, 
and just seeing the relationships that you build in baseball and how, how close you get to people, that's what really makes me love the game. My roommate now, Jacob Moreland, he's, uh, he's my best friend. It's great. I know, I know for sure we're going to be lifelong friends. I've always called him the mayor just because he knows everybody and he puts everything in line. He handles everything. Off the field, I think he's a great leader. He's president of SAC. He does a bunch of community service. How much campus involvement we can get and how much we can get this campus to come together for one cause. Darian's baseball career has helped to shape him into the leader we see on campus. But UTA was only a step in his baseball journey. Darian is preparing to leave behind Maverick Baseball and hopefully move on to the next level. After I graduate, hopefully keep playing ball. It's always bittersweet. You want to be able to move on to the next part of your journey, but um, at the same time, you're never going to forget the memories that you made, you know, getting to this point. So, I mean, the last three years here have been absolutely amazing. I couldn't have asked for anything better. And, uh, I mean, doing it with a group of guys I've been able to do it, do it with year after year has just been a, a very unique experience. So, uh, no matter what, it's going to be my first love. I mean, baseball is what I, it's what I do. It's always going to be a part of me. So it's a, it's a key thing that's made me grow into the person I am today. To leave this place better than when we got here. You can catch Darian in the Mavs against Dallas Baptist University tomorrow night at Clay Gould Ballpark. Speaking of the baseball team, Michael Ortiz has the latest on both the performances of the baseball and softball Mavericks. The UTA baseball and softball team played a three-game series this weekend. The baseball team played against the Raging Cajuns, who are currently ranked number 18, and the Lady Mavs played their last game at home against Troy. Both teams hoping to pick up another win. Clay Gold and Allen Sachs Fields were full of fans and furry friends as they enjoyed Bark at the Park. The Lady Mavs were the first to take the field against Troy. The Samantha Clakey stayed busy on the mound as she pitched the whole game for the Lady Mavs. Hits from both teams started early. The third inning was a long one with two outs and a full count. Troy scored a three-run home run over the fence. But in that same inning, the Lady Mavs got bases loaded with no outs UTA scored one run on a bad pitch. The game got paused after Troy head coach Beth Mullins argued with an umpire on a bad call, eventually getting herself kicked out of the game. Sandra Mendoza hits a line drive to center field, ending the third inning 8-6 with the Lady Mavs leading the game. The Lady Mavs then scored one run in the fourth and three runs in the fifth with the score 12-6. Troy then followed scoring with a two-run home run over the fence with the score being 12-8. Troy made a comeback in the seventh inning, scoring one run on a line drive, followed by a three-run home run over the fence, tying up the game 12-12. But the game came down to the ninth inning, when UTA had two batters on base with the winning run at third. With a base hit, the Lady Mavs defeated Troy 13-12. The Lady Mavs ended senior day with success. Like everyone really wanted to win for the seniors, so I think that's really what helped us win in the end, is that everyone was really pushing for us, and it just made the day that much better. Meanwhile, on the other side at Clay Gold, the baseball team played against the Raging Cajuns. The game remained scoreless through the second inning. But it wasn't until the third inning when Louisiana scored a run, followed by a three-run home run with another two-run home run. The Mavs had a tough inning with the score being 6-0. to zero. The Mavs scored one run in the same inning. The game continued with Louisiana scoring four runs in the fourth, six in the sixth, and three in the seventh. And the Mavs only able to score four in the fifth and one in the seventh. The game was cut short in the seventh due to the 10-run rule. The final score was 19-6 with the Raging Cajuns winning. The baseball team still has three game series left in the season. Well, it won't be easy. I mean, uh, we got DBU coming up, we got Little Rock this weekend, and, and, and anytime you get beat as bad as we do, it gets out of hand, and, and uh, it's happened to us. I mean, uh, when it happens, it, it, it seems like more than one loss. But just like our Saturday win last week at Troy, it's only one, you know, so you got to bounce back. Marcos Ortiz, UTA News. Go out there and support your Mavericks as they near the end of their seasons. Well, that's it for our last edition of this spring's UTA Spotlight. On behalf of our producer, James Belknap, and our radiographer, Trey Brackens, I'm Maddie Alvarez. And I'm Lander Ledbetter. Next time, let's meet up on campus.